Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be looking at um, the Pattern 14 uh, British rifle from uh, World War One. Um, originally designed uh, to replace the uh, Smelly SMLE uh, in the First World War um, as a more accurate long-range rifle, ended up being um, preferred as a sniper rifle uh, due to its accuracy but complications with manufacturing meant that it just couldn't be produced in time to replace the SMLE. Um, five round internal magazine um, used through the First World War, Second World War, um, given to the Home Guard as their rifles. I've shot this um, accurately out to 550 yards, 600 meters, um, with the flip-up sight and some decent uh, PPU rifle line ammunition. You just set the rear sight to the distance you're shooting at and it's point and click. Uh, that was on military SARTS targets, so 4x4 four four foot and 2x2 two two foot targets at um, 550 yards. Hit them every time. Um, I've tried shooting it at 800 yards at a four foot by four foot target. Uh, the first few shots hit reliably onto the four foot by four foot target and then the wind picked up and that's it, I was done for. But in terms of the flip up sights um, being reliable and getting you, you know, in the range um, of where you need to be shooting uh, for harassing fire rather than accurate fire, yeah, it's perfect. Um, I won't worry too much about the rest of the history uh, of the rifle in general. This gun um, I bought from Chris at CNG Firearms, who bought it from um, a chap who got it when it was decommissioned by the Home Guard. Uh, you can see that the stock has been sanded down quite heavily, um, which means a lot of the markings have been removed from the unit markings, um, and you can tell by how shallow the, the hand securing grooves are. Apparently this is something people used to do in the 70s, um, but then, you know, so was racism and bashing labour unions, um, so a far, far from perfect decade. Um, but yeah, the rifle itself works beautifully. The action is in great condition. Um, it's got a Mauser style bolt, doesn't work exactly like a Mauser. I'll show you how to strip um, that bolt completely apart. You've got your bolt release, um, which has a very delicate um, spring part in it, and I'll show you that so you know to be careful with it um, and how likely it is to break. Um, I'll also show you how to remove the internal magazine um, and actually take the rifle apart fully. Unlike um, a Swedish Mauser, which I also have, it doesn't have a nice tidy strip down mechanism. It does require um, flat headed screwdrivers to take the furniture off um, and to remove the receiver action pieces. Um, as an aside, if you are looking at getting one of these rifles or thinking about it, um, there's an affordable book that's available on Amazon, uh, which will talk you through um, well, instructions for armourers. Um, and then if you're interested in being a nerd, or like I am, and trying to find out um, the heritage of the particular rifle, then a less affordable, but still very good book, is The Broad Arrow uh, by Ian Skenerton. And that runs through um, all of the different markings that you'll find. Um, there were three different manufacturers for the 1916. Um, the 1916 production pattern 14. Remington 
Eddie Stone Remington and Winchester. Um, this rifle is a Winchester action and it has an Eddie Stone um, barrel. And since I bought it, it now also has uh, an Eddie Stone extractor because the Winchester extractor cracked. Um, but again, that's, that's getting into the weeds. But if you are interested in British rifle history, British military rifle history, um, that's the book that you, you need to get. So, we'll start taking the rifle apart. First things first, we'll remove our bolt. Similar to uh, the Mauser bolt, uh, and most other bolts to be fair, the release is on the side, you just pull it out and your bolt will pull free. Beyond this point, everything else you need to start removing screws with the screwdriver. Um, because this rifle's quite long, I'll do the tear down and then I'll zoom in so it'll be easier to see the finer um, details that I'm working with. So, if we start with taking the top furniture off, um, we are removing the barrel bands by just undoing the screws. Uh, there's going to be some noise in the background of the video. Uh, the camera is currently resting on uh, our pet rat cage. Uh, and they are awake and active this morning. So for that front band, um, the screw is deeper and it is a cross bolt that runs through underneath the barrel um, and it's actually holding on the bayonet lug um, and the end of the barrel support. So we can take the two top pieces of furniture off. Because of the way the sights work, um, I don't remove the rest of the barrel bands. Uh, the sights are pinned on and they're incredibly accurate so I don't want to risk messing around with them so I just leave those in place. Um, it does mean that they rattle around and there's the potential for them to mar the finish on your barrel. Uh, however, if you buy one of these rifles, the production for the Patton 14 ended in 1916. So your rifle is gonna be at least 105 years old um, so I wouldn't be worrying too much about a few marks um, on the barrel finish. So now I'm just going to remove the trigger plate. And before I do that, actually, if you want, if you had an issue with um, a round being jammed in the internal magazine and you wanted to remove the internal magazine, there is a pin. Um, or a detent rather that you depress and you just push that back and the base plate of the magazine will come out and your internal magazine can just be removed like that. It's nice and easy. Um, later I'll go through taking that fully apart um, because when you first get this rifle, if it's one that someone hasn't known how to detail strip or didn't want to detail strip, you'll find that they'll be rusting um, in these places and it'd be good to remove that. So that requires a bit of um, deeper disassembly. And then just finish unscrewing the trigger plate. And lift that clear. And your internal magazine will come out attached to the trigger plate. Um, it's easily separated, again, um, for cleaning and buffing up where there may be some corrosion where that hasn't been removed and deep cleaned for, for
for a good number of years, or more likely decades. Okay, and then we can just lift the rest of our stock furniture clear. Um, and there's nothing else really in it. This rifle um, went through the weed and repair, had its um, barrel condition disc removed, but has been quite satisfyingly replaced with a George the Sixth penny, which is a nice little touch. It's a shame that um, the unit markings have been shaved away, um, but that's a nice little touch to have. And then you have your classic M filled buttstock um, with a space for putting your oil bottle um, should you have one. Okay, so now we have our metalwork um, barrel receiver trigger and our uh, bolt lock. So I'll zoom you in uh, and we can start working through these pieces and how to break them down. Okay, so let's start by removing our trigger assembly, which is nice and easy. It's a simple punch pin to remove, very similar to um, very similar to the design of the Mauser. Make sure we've got a nice clear gap underneath. go and your pin drops clear and you have your trigger spring and your trigger now you can remove the trigger from the plate it's held in with a pin I found that the pin on this one is um, very tightly held in place I've been able to clean around it without any great issue um, so I haven't felt the need to force that out so I'm going to leave those pieces together your safety catch is also another one that can be easily taken apart. So it's a simple screw. That removes the detent and spring. So you have the housing cap. And then there is a spring that by turning this through a full rotation and just finding the loose point, the safety lever can just be gently levered out of place. Now it's quite tough to get back in, so you can enjoy watching me struggle with that later. Um, and then just the assembly can be gently removed out the back. And there's our safety spring. So yeah, the spring is, um, sorry, the safety catch is being actuated by that little cut off to drop back and then push it forward to lock the trigger from moving. So that's the safety spring removed. Um, I'm not going to take off the rear sight again because the gun shoots very accurately. Uh, and I don't want to risk throwing the windage zero off um, because that has to be adjusted at the front end um, and I'm just going to um, let sleeping dogs lie. 
When it comes to removing your bolt release, again, you have a simple screw at the top, which is also similar to the Mauser setup. Now, what is different to the Mauser is the way the spring piece is held together. Okay, so for your ejector, um, which is built into the bolt stop, as is standard with Mauser style bolt actions. The spring, unlike a Mauser spring um, or a Swedish Mauser spring, which I've got experience with, it's not a good firm piece. Um, I broke mine almost immediately when I got my rifle um, and it's a Winchester action and I only managed to find an Eddystone replacement and it took a bit of wiggling to get it in, but then I got it in and I promised myself that I wouldn't take it apart again. So I'm not going to take that apart. However, when you do, if you do want to take them apart, this rear piece is held in place with two little teeth here. And you punch those clear, lift the back away, and the ejector will then just slide out. When you want to put it back together, don't feel that you have to put the retention spring in place before you return the ejector and then try and force them in because that's what I did and by doing that I ended up with this. So this is the spring that the ejector runs on. That very tiny, very flimsy piece of steel. So as you can imagine that's very easily broken. So if your ejector stops working and you do need to replace it, then by all means take this apart, pop those teeth out, um, lift the spring, the retention spring clear, and then the ejector piece will just slide out nice and easily. Um, because this doesn't want to move easily, I'm just going to, again, leave well alone. Um, but should you need to take them apart, that's how you do it. So when it comes to the actual main receiver assembly, um, that's basically it. You've got your um, barrel furniture retaining ring that sits up there. Again, very similar to um, other Mauser designs. Uh, you've got your flip up sights, the protective wings, um, which are nice. You've got your ghost ring sight and then the ladder flip up sight. Um, this last piece of housing for your bolt retention uh, or your bolt retainer can be lifted clear. Um, when these were first designed, if you get an old one that didn't go through the Whedon restoration, this will have, this section will have a flip up volley sight attached to it. And that was from back when the thinking was still that these rifles should have capability out to 2100 yards um, to work as harassing volley fire, essentially what we would use artillery, modern artillery for. Um, so you would line your men up, they would have a rear volley sight on the back here and there would be a matching one on the front. And as you can see on the stock, this one still has the plate where that volley sight um, was situated and you would flip that up and that would give you the ability um, to lob ammunition out to 20, 2100 yards roughly um, to harass the enemy and disrupt, um, disrupt their advance. That was proven to be unnecessary, um, modern artillery took over. So during the Whedon repair, um, all of those were, 
all of those for the rifles that remained in service were removed, so now they're quite rare to find. But yeah, so with regards to taking apart the main receiver assembly, that's everything that you would need to do to get a good deep clean. To take apart the follower for your magazine, um, it's very simple. This is just a folded metal spring, which is slid into grooves on the base plate. So you just pull that clear. And again, the top is exactly the same. Folded steel spring that slides into grooves uh, in the top of the magazine follower. And again, you just pull that clear and then you can clean out any rusting or um, age old gunk that's residing within there. As I showed you, you've got your trigger plate and your internal magazine and they pull clear like that. The spring um, that holds the bottom of the magazine plate in place can be removed if you so want. It's held in place by a small pin. Um, again, that's a small finickety piece that I'm not going to risk taking apart um, and risk losing something. Getting replacement parts for pattern 14 rifles is a lot more difficult than standard Lee Enfields. Um, they're not as popular, there weren't, there weren't as many made. It can be done, but essentially you're looking for someone who has a pattern 14 rifle that doesn't work and they're happy to cannibalize it to provide parts. There's not a major stock of spare parts for the pattern 14s kicking around. So if you break something, um, fixing it could become a challenge. Right, so then we move on to the bolt. Um, and I've just realized that I've made a rookie mistake because I've taken all of this apart. And to get the bolt apart simply, you need to have it in the receiver, set the receiver, cock it, set the receiver on safe, and when you withdraw the bolt, um, it will then hold a gap that you wedge open um, with a plastic tool, preferably, and that will allow you to unscrew the top of the bolt. So, because I've done this back to front, what we're going to do, reassemble the rifle, and then we'll tackle the bolt separately so that I can do it properly and not try to fudge it by manually forcing these pieces apart because um, it's just not worth the risk. So if we come back to the main receiver assembly pieces, uh, we can just slide our internal magazine back into the trigger plate, nice and easy. We can return our magazine follower and spring back into their respective parts. So you're just sliding the spring under those or into those recesses and just clipping it in at the back and it will make a, a light clicking sound. Um, and again, with the top, you're just sliding the top of that spring into the bottom of the follower, clicking that back into place. And then your um, magazine plate and your follower are all set and ready to be reinstalled. Moving back to the receiver itself. Uh, so we're going to reinstall our, um, our... We'll reinstall our safety catch first, as that can be more challenging. So we have our internal safety pin, which slides in here. And that needs to be pushed forward enough for us to be able to return the safety catch back into its position. And to do that can certainly be challenging. It takes a good bit of muscle um, and lining the pieces back up 
just rightly to slip back into place. This is where you're going to see me comically struggle and not really be able to see what I'm doing because of the position of the camera. But I assure you I've done this before and it wasn't any more fun when I did it then either. close yet so far. And we just rotate that back into place. There we go. So yeah, it takes a little bit of muscle. What you're trying to achieve is Pushing the retention pin that you can just see extending out of the um, receiver body there. Pushing that far enough forward. I'm just going to wrap these parts so they don't rattle so much. Pushing that far enough forward on its spring that you can start to get the safety uh, into the slot. And then you're rotating the safety until it finds a position where it's pushing that pin far enough forward that the cutout in the safety switch can slide in behind it and then it's a question of just wrestling it home. Um, there may well be a gentler and better way of doing it but uh, I don't know what that is and as I've said numerous times before um, I'm not a gunsmith. So then we're just going to replace our retention cap for the safety because we don't want that to come out again. Okay, and then next we're going to replace our bolt retention spring. So we'll line that up so that the, the actual spring part of the bolt stop um, will fit into that channel. And then again, it's going to be a bit of muscle to just push everything into line so that we can drop our screw, our retention screw through and then just tighten it down into place. Now when you get this screw in, you won't want to tighten it all the way down because as you will see, the sharp part of that screw protrudes from the bottom and goes into the wooden stock furniture. Um, so you want to make sure that you've left yourself enough room to put the receiver and the barrel back into the stock and then tighten that down once everything's correctly in place. So next we'll replace our trigger. Turning this over and again, this is a nice simple one where you're just matching up the line, uh, matching up the dots, sorry, for the pins and then sliding everything home. does help if you put things back in the correct position. So the screw goes in there, the trigger goes in there, and then again a little bit of muscle to get everything lined up in the correct place and the pin just slides home. There we 
we go. So that pin is now securely in place. Push that back through a little bit so it's flush at the back. It's a very small tap. And that trigger is now functioning correctly. So the next point will be to put it back into the stock furniture. So we move our barrel bands to the very end. our internal magazine back into place to make sure that it all guides in correctly. Take our long screw, drop that into the back, short screw into the front, and then we can just slide everything back into place. It says confidently Ensuring that things like the barrel band are in the correct position and then just very lightly get these screws back into their home. Okay, so I've just zoomed you back out a bit to make this easier to see. So we've slightly put the screws back in just to hold everything in position. We've got our first barrel band uh, into place and there are um, recesses in the stock to allow that to slide in. So then we can take the top barrel cover and just slide that under that barrel band, pull back the next barrel band and then replace the very end of the wooden barrel cover. So to get all of this back into position, just pinch that barrel band together and just screw it back into place. So to make life easier for yourself, I recommend not letting the screw completely out, which is what I've done when you're moving the barrel band forward. Then you have to try and pinch it back into line before you can tighten it back up. Oh, and I know exactly what I've missed. I thought something didn't look right. Another reason not to let the screw come completely out is that your sling attachment will come out, which is annoying, and then you will tighten it up and then embarrass yourself by forgetting to put it back on before you reattach everything and then look confused as to why something just doesn't quite look right. There we are. Adds to the reality of it all, doesn't it? That's the right fit spec. Nice and snugly. Tighten down. Let's bring our bayonet lug back into position and pull that over the top of the end barrel cover so then that will just back everything else up nicely into the position where it should be and we can just take our cross bolt put that back through and tighten it If you're working on your own rifle, I recommend not trying to have it in a position to try to film it because it makes it a lot easier um, if you've got it 
at an appropriate angle in front of you. Okay, and then just finish tightening that, that barrel band. Okay, so, that is the stock back together. We can then tighten down our trigger plate into the receiver action. Because we know that none of that is now going to move and shift into a position where it doesn't want to sit correctly. tightly secured into position and then we can return our magazine follower so just drop the magazine follower down into the internal magazine have the plate pushed forward and then bring it back until it correctly clicks into position or it does what it's just done here and clicks into position at one end and not the other So you want it to feed under the recess at the front at the same time it's clipping in at the back so you're just putting a good bit of downward force and then pushing it forward right and that is now the core of the rifle back together just do a quick function test so yeah we're cocking correctly Instead of dry firing, I'm just going to pull the trigger here, which, with the safety off, there we go. So, you can function test your trigger by having the safety off, and instead of dry firing it and risking damaging the pin, if you pull the trigger, you should be able to just push the bolt into battery without it cocking and then close the dog leg bolt down and that will only work if your trigger is correctly set up and we can see that it's cocking correctly as well okay so to move on to stripping the bolt down what we need to do is slightly differently to a mauser so with a mauser you will cock it you will turn up the safety at the rear of the bolt and then that will allow you to remove the bolt with um, the rear of the bolt locked in position and loose so that you can unscrew it and pull the assembly apart. The end field is different if you cock it and then put it in safe it will lock the bolt down so what you need to do is put it in safe before you cock it Cock it and you'll see that it opens up a gap here and then you need that gap to stay open so let's see if we can get it to work with the cocktail stick and do it on camera and get it all balancing so when you raise the bolt it will then attempt to close so we've locked that open you then withdraw the bolt from the action and put the rest of the rifle to one side and now with that locked open I'll be able to unscrew and separate the firing pin mechanism from the bolt housing. So I'll zoom you back in forward so you can see the rest of this process. Okay, so to take apart the rest of the bolt, one of the first, th first things you're going to need is a firing pin block, um, and I just made my own. The reason being, you need to put considerable downward pressure through the firing pin to depress the rear of the bolt assembly and take off this 
rear cap. To do that, some people will say that you can just push down, but you can and will bend the tip of your firing pin. The tip of my Swedish Mauser firing pin is slightly bent from, I assume, this process. So just by drilling a small hole in a wooden block that securely um, accommodates the tip of the firing pin, you're then displacing that pressure Getting that one. You're displacing that pressure into this thicker section of the firing pin where it's more able to manage and distribute it. So then you are pushing down firmly and just removing the cap when it goes into the position. So, in fact, I'll let this up before I try and show you. Oh. Right. So when you look at the firing pin, you'll see that these edges are rounded and then squared off. So what I was just doing to remove this is there are squared off sections in the cap end of the firing pin and you are just turning until those square sections line up and you can just lift it clear. Then when you're putting it back on later, you're turning so that they no longer lift clear and they lock into place. But that is now the firing pin separated from um, from the cap, the bolt cap. Uh, we then have another part of the bolt housing um, that the bolt cap resides within as part of the locking mechanism. The rest of the bolt is a solid lump of steel with the exception of the extractor. Um, which rotates to allow the second lug to lock into place within the action um, when the bolt is put into battery. And then as you rotate it out of battery, it moves it back into line so that it can grip onto the cartridge and withdraw and extract the cartridge. To remove this is quite simple. You are simply turning it past past the groove that it runs in so that the end is sitting within this indentation at the rear of the bolt and then you are simply just pushing forward slight upward pressure to lift the tip of the extractor over the edge of the bolt and then upward pressure and it will just slide off this clip that slots into this housing here and that is the extractor removed. Uh, it is possible to remove this clip, it's just a collar, um, but it will require spreading and clipping it off. Uh, I haven't found a reason to need to do that yet. It's possible that there may be one, um, but I've chosen to leave it. Cleaning the inside of the bolt is also difficult. I filled it with Napier, um, anti-corrosive gun cleaner uh, and then just you know periodically the longest bits of cotton wool and um, you know sticks with rags that I can fit down into that bolt just to try and clean out some of that 105 year old grime um, and ensure that there's no corrosion in there. As you can see this bolt's been polished up and it means that where some of the corrosion has been removed from the age-old corrosion some of the um, markings, some of the machine markings have been taken off and the acceptance markings. Um, but, you know, the bolt's in very healthy condition, so I'm not going to complain about that too much. And that is essentially, well, not even essentially, that is it for your Pattern 14 Mauser style bolt. It's very simple. Um, it's a very simple assembly. Having the firing pin block is the key to making life easy because trying to exert the amount of pressure required to remove the cap um, from this top of the bolt mechanism is difficult. Um, and if you're trying to do it by balancing on the tip of the pin, that's not easy. And if you're trying to 
work a way around it by, I don't know, holding it in a towel or something, again, you're making life difficult for yourself. So to reassemble the bolt um, is nice and easy. We take our bolt spring and we place it over the firing pin. Uh, we then take our top part of our bolt assembly and slide that down. And then, as I was saying before, we are taking this top part, uh, the cap, as I've been calling it, of the bolt, turning it so that it slides down over the square positions. And then, as we had it before, just putting a blocker in place so that it doesn't completely return back into position. Because when this locks down into the bottom, you won't be able to slide it back into the rest of your bolt assembly housing. So you need to keep those slightly separated for the time being. To return the extractor, we are lining up the clip with the recess at the bottom of the bolt housing. Uh, we are lining up the two points of that clip with um, this retaining portion of the extractor and then just pushing down till it slides back into place. And again, a slight um, backward pressure this time just to get the end to clear the bolt housing and it will line back up with um, the recess for it to slide freely in and then you're just turning it into position and it will clip off the recess and then it will be able to slide freely uh, in the bolt assembly as it should. So then the next point we can just slide our Fire and pin back in and screw it back into position until it locks tight. Or rather doesn't lock tight because it will remain loose, but it's in the correct position so that when you feed it back into the rifle, so it will still be hanging slightly loose. So you just need to make sure that as you return the bolt, into the receiver that this doesn't twist out of line because if it twists out of line then it won't feed back in and at this point it's going to catch because you've got the safety locked into place it's going to catch and that will open back up the space that we had before your blocker tool you can call it that will drop out and then when you lift the bolt it's going to snap back into the position where it should be, which is locked up nice and tight. Take the safety off, push the bolt back down to ensure that it's now cocking appropriately. And then to ensure that it's still working with the trigger, you can just pull the trigger in, tuck that forward, and your bolt will then lock into place. And if you then put it on safe, you shouldn't be able to lift that bolt and it should all be secure. And that is it for the uh, Pattern 14. Um, the Winchester Remington Eddystone Pattern 14.